So, our referee for this afternoon is Rick Lloyd. A little shout out for Rick. And our timekeeper is Matt Clark. Thank you very much, Matt. So, the rules it is a race to five. It's a 30 minute match, 30 second shot clock. After 15 minutes, it drops to 20 seconds. There is a five second counter. What happens when it goes down to five? Should we give it a quick run? Five, four, three, two, one. If after 30 minutes it's level, it goes to a black ball shootout. That's what we want to see. We want to see a black ball shootout. Listen, without further ado, should we start to get these players out? Get the games going, yeah? So the first player we have coming out this afternoon, his hometown is Dublin. His nickname is the real number one. Achievements, he's listed as he's the most successful money player in the whole of the world. Let's get him out. It's George, the real number one, Tierney. He's definitely the crowd's favourite this afternoon. The next one out, he comes from Bolton. I do believe Bolton's nearby. His nickname is The Cannon. Two times UK Pool Tour semi-finalist, Premier League UK Pool Tour player, EPA County National Merit winner. He is The Cannon. Let's introduce him. Let's give him a round of applause for Chris Hampson. Good afternoon and welcome to the Toam Shootout. My name is Simon Webb, delighted to be joined in the commentary box by 2018 world champion Ben Davis. Afternoon, Ben. Afternoon, Simon. How yeah. are we doing, everyone? Yeah, really looking forward to this event. It really is something a little bit different. And that is our lineup for this afternoon's Facebook matches before we go live on Free Sports tonight at 730 and of course, you'll be playing last match this afternoon. Ben, looking forward to this one? Yeah, definitely. Everyone should uh, get the slippers on and kick back. I think it's going to be a fun day of action. That. Yeah, it's, uh, it really is uh, an exciting format, an exciting atmosphere. Of course, you've played in, in one of these before. Uh, the shot clock, 30 seconds is brutal, but when we go down to 20, that's going to be something else. Yeah, you've got no time to think. You've just got to go. First instincts, your only instinct. No time for a... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I can't wait. And it's tough when the crowd get on your back as well. Yeah. Anything can happen. <laughs> and they're encouraged to get on your back as well. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go with George Tierney versus Chris Hampson. First match up. Perhaps a little bit of that added spice and pressure with this afternoon's matches in terms of the winner gets to go on and play in the quarterfinals, but to play live on, on TV. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, especially for you know some of the field here will probably haven't experienced that TV matches before, so it's probably something on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Three and number one gets the lag done. Can't believe I'm calling him the real number one, but I'm just gonna go with it for today. I think you have to. <laughs> you have to. Um, yeah, he's some boy for play to him. He's got some belief and some confidence. He's got a lot of fans out there, I know that much. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how he's going to play in this atmosphere. He certainly um, does a lot of talking and, and gives a lot. Can he, uh, can he perform? Can he back up? That's, that's what it's all about. So as uh, Kevin Moyle said, it's a, a race to five and a very short and severe 30 second shot clock that cuts down to 20 seconds after 15 minutes. It is only a 30 minute match. And if we are tied after 30 minutes, we go to a black ball shootout. So here we go. <laughs> I 
Well, I mean, Paul, all, all Paul matches, we talk about the break an awful lot. And I think in such a short race, it's going to be talked about a lot tonight. Who can give themselves the opportunities, not only give themselves the opportunities, but who can give themselves the the better tables to go at yeah you know, the less you, with, with no time to think the you know the uncomplicated finishes i've never played on one of these tables before the pockets look a little bit nippier than the supremes so it should be interesting oh. <laughs> you know, a tough shot that one not guaranteed to make it uh, hasn't left too bad a table though Good pot. He's going to need another one here, though. Yeah, if he can find that next ball, though, I think he's on the one through the gap. Nice, nice Superb Q in from George Boy. Yeah, and he just, now he's into his visit, he just has that one bad red near the black. Doesn't go, doesn't have an open pocket, and it doesn't double at the moment, so he needs to give that some consideration quite quickly. Oh, exhibition shots. What's he done there? That's, that's a crappy shot. Well, it looks like George Tierney has come to play. That is a, an absolutely brilliant shot. What a shot. If he's honest, he's, he's probably been a touch unlucky that he hasn't been left the one into the middle pocket. He, yeah, I think he's on the. Pl I think he can play the cannon though and plant it past the yellow into centre. Oh, he's gone the wrong way. Uh, I think it's the element of safety with that one side. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. I think he was still a touch unlucky not to be on a better ball than than that, but. I think yes. I could have sworn he could have played the, the plant into the centre. Surprised didn't take that on. I think you called it with a riskier shot. If he yeah. misses that, he probably loses the frame. Maybe didn't fancy it so early on. It's not easy playing out there in front of that crowd. <laughs> like I was saying. Oh, look at that black. And that is the shot clock crowd letting him know how long he's got left <laughs> oh it's come close to knocking that black in it and now here we go George Tierney to take the first frame no problems This simple black and the real number one will be up and running. And there it goes. He looks confident. He does. He looks really up for it. Chris is going to have to uh, find his game if he wants to challenge him here. A couple of half chances for Chris. Missed that shot into the corner early on. Trying to play it off a, a little cluster of balls to open up the frame and then a really tough shot. Trying to yeah. pull out a, a long treble which was always going to be long odds. You don't get time to settle in either, you've just got to get out there and do the business, and it's very hard to do. It's a good break. His reds look good. Yeah, he caught that break really nice and flush. Lovely split, and this is what I talk about in frame one. Who can give themselves these sort of opportunities where not too much to think about it's pretty it's wide open yeah he's got a little bit of work to do but he's got plenty of opportunities to uh to get like, move the balls he needs to move just looking at the layout it may well be that the black is his trickiest ball yeah i think he's tried to move the black there and just missed it He can work his way around these nicely. He can always land in behind the black, taking it up toward the top corners. The ball is about the pot, though. If it goes into the bottom left corner, you'd like to be leaving that there to drop onto the black. Right. 
take. Oh, oh, he's trying to play off the yellow. Similar to the ball he missed in, the, in frame one, tried to take it off the yellow to open up the pocket for the black. Yeah, yeah. I think the yellow is a little bit too close to the cush. Come on, George, you milk the clock. <laughs> I think this could be um, this could be too early to George. Only real question mark is the yellow in the top half of the table. When does he travel up? He could just leave the one on the left centre to drift up to it. I thought you would have taken the one to the bottom right first then, and then play the one he's right next to now. And then left the angle to just drift up off the one on the centre, but he's going up now, I think. Doesn't want to land straight. <laughs> I think the, uh, the crowd say not straight, they know what's happening as well. It's not too bad, he can't get right behind his next drop, but it's uh, close enough to the corner not to cause him any just issues. He needs to drop onto the side rail. Just like that, yeah. He's looking very confident, you give him that. I think this is one of those shots that's probably a little bit harder than it looks, because you could easily drift too far across to the left-hand side of the table here. Yeah, I think he just needs to part it, and like you say, not hit it too hard, and he's fine. a little bit too hard he can still clip this back in but he's going to be flying into the red and not guaranteed to land on that black yeah you, you wanted to you wanted to be slipping past the red if he plays it with a load of top he could push through the red and top the white through it not sure if he can screw off it can he no he's too thin he yeah, played that with an awful lot of right hand side, tried to sort of flick off the red, but I'm gonna, it too I'm gonna, I got a feeling he's going to get this. I think he's going to come off the side cush and kick it in the corner. Oh, you've heard it here first. I just, I've just got a feeling he's going he's gonna to get close to it at least. Well, this would bring the house down very early on in this event. He's got it! Oh! What a shot! What a shot! Unreal stuff from the real number one. I think we're gonna have to get his shirt changed to the magician instead of the real number one. Super shot. <laughs> you can hear the crowd there, straight on his back. Yeah, they enjoyed that one. It's one of those that, as a pool player, you always kind of fancy, don't you? Because you know you're going to get solid contact on it. You know it's going to go close, but controlled it really well. Yeah, he's always going to get close to it. Be nice! It's not a bad break. Oh, he's going to be very happy with this split. These reds look good. Every red has a pocket. Black in the middle of the table. It's just about how he goes round the route. I'm not sure about that route, but as George was talking about, and he has his own route, so. Yeah, he left himself hamper queuing and awkward angle on this red. And White's going to be going close to that black. He didn't need to go down for this red. He could have left it because the, the red on the rail he's, he can use to get onto it. But. Yeah, that's a decent recovery. Still not back in perfect position. I think he's on the one down the cushion. If he's on that one, it's a bit of a bonus. <laughs> this white ball's doing some mileage. I'm just trying to work out if he's going to leave the one down to the right hand corner last now or not if he does he may not get good on it it looks like he's going to leave it last just needs to make sure he's got the right angle on the one in the centre that's not too bad just needs to drift past the black coming back across great shot perfect Oh, 
George Tierney backs up that brilliant black in the previous frame by making our first break and dish of this Tawam shootout. And he is flying along, 3-0 ahead. It is only a race to five, so Chris Hampson needs to really get going now. Looks to be settled in well, does uh, the real number one flow in? There we see him there, handsome specimen of a man. Oh, he's been a bit unlucky, he's dry again. A little bit surprised he's changed his break because he hit the first break so well and gave himself a great chance. Moved across the table, hits it solid again, but nothing drops and the mood George is in. He'll be fencing 4-0 very quickly. Yeah. He's got a lot of work to do, though. I'm sure if he can get on the uh, loss straight away. That look, well, that looks really perfect. He must be the partner. This would make life a lot easier for him if he can get this out the way early. Yeah, that's a good shot. Yeah, now that every yellow does have a pocket. Every uh, yellow is in the open. It's just about how you work your way around them. Yeah, I think the only tricky one at the minute is the one that we can see directly to the left of the white, because that red's causing a little bit of a blocker. But he's landed perfect there to just go into the red. So that will open the frame right up. Oh, yeah, the yellow does, the yellow does pass the black. So he's got a couple of options. He can, well, he can actually all pot all three from here. It's whichever way he wants to go. Yeah, I'm, I think he'd like to play the one into the centre, push the red to the rail, but I don't think he's going to have enough angle to get back down. Might, might just be able to okay, take the bottom one first. I think he's okay either way, yeah. He'd like to take the one into the left corner first and land on the bottom rail. I think the, the one in the cushions at Lothin and the one it looks. I was surprised they didn't load that up with a load of right down side to come down to the bottom crush. Playing for the black in the same corner, and yeah, it's good enough. It's pretty good. The man's on fire. There it goes. So three straight finishes from George Tierney. A counter clearance with an amazing black, and then a break dish, reverse dish to back that up. Quickly 4 0 ahead. Not even halfway through this match yet. So here we go, George breaking off for a white wash in the first game, he's got a ball. He has hit that break like a dream, he's ping open, caught it so solid. He's got options, a little bit of work to do but finds him getting close to getting these reds if not getting them. He was coming down the table for the one at the bottom rail next. But hasn't landed on it yeah he's still got the op plant into the top right which is fairly straightforward oh he could get past i'd prefer to play the plant though because the red you were hitting then was on the pocket so you could use that to stun down for this red on the bottom yeah this the, this frame still hangs in the balance and that is the balance is can he get good on that red on the bottom end of the table not sure if he's got an angle here to go down. Possibly. That's a great shot. He's absolutely fizzing, is the man from Ireland. Big Georgie Teeny is on fire. That's 
Oh, a bit of touch of lucky to land a little bit too straight. I think he's got the one to the top left. Oh, he maybe hasn't looked at it. Oh. A bit too confident there, I think. I think the one to the top left would have been a bit easier for him. I think he was just in full flow, didn't give it any thought just yeah. there on potting that ball. A little bit too confident. Oh, Chris Hampton, you are right up against it now. Oh, he's rushed it. He's rushed it. It's, that, it's not easy to play out there in front of that crowd, and the clock doesn't give you any time to think. You've just got to see a shot and go for it. I oh, just wanted to avoid the jaw when he played that one. And it uh, would have got the white down the table and, and kept it all hidden. But he may well get back to the table once again as George Daly has not landed on his last ball. Big shot required. Five, four, the crowd on his back. It's not going to be easy. Oh. Crowd fancy the treble. Really struggling to settle. Oh. Just keeping uh, Chris in the match here, giving him some hope. Drama. No thought to the pot this time from Chris Hampson. Just nudging him on the rail over the pocket. Got the total snooker. It's a little careless to miss that red. Um, yes, you know, even if he hits the red, there's a good chance he's going to go on and lose the frame from it. But yeah, Chris is struggling a little bit here, and you know, you don't want it. This match can turn around quickly. There's still just about enough time in the match for him to get back into it. Yeah, I think the way the balls are situated here for Chris, I think. Um, this gives him a little chance to let his arm go a bit. And this is we, where because we haven't really had much of a chance to see how see much of him away, to be fair. No, the chances he's had, he's had a couple of opportunities earlier on in the match where he's trying to play balls off balls and wasn't able to do so. Yeah. And uh, to be fair, George Cerny has played a really good match up until this frame. Yeah, he's played well. And he's okay there, yellow onto yellow. You'd have to think he's going to clear these up now. Oh, that's a little bit tricky. He should be okay though. He's got the he can screw straight back or top it through, I think. And this is where putting that red safe first shot just makes things a little things a little bit easier for him. Just means he can play this one down the rail with a bit more confidence. Yeah, he's pretty well. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Chris Hampson gets his first frame on the board. He still trails 4-1, but he's hanging on in this match. Just over 10 minutes left in the match, so you really need to get a motor on if he's to get back to 4-4 or even get back to win it. But all you can do is keep trying, keep plugging away. Yeah, he's got um, an uphill task, to say the least. I'm sure George won't be in much of a rush. Yeah, it looked like George played that frame, like he's enjoying it out there so much. He didn't want to match the finish and, and come in. He wanted to stay out there for a bit more. Yeah, I think he got a bit too confident at one point. Oh, he's lost the weight. That was probably one of his biggest bricks. You can see how much the clock plays on your mind, because he hit that break the minute the triangle had been removed by the referee. <laughs> trying to use every second of that uh, match clock and that's definitely something we're going to see throughout the day as the day progresses you know players you know if they go two three frames behind they're going to have to be very conscious of of that shot clock yeah. have i got enough time to get back in the match do i need to push the boat out yeah definitely i think this could be it for the first game. Barring any 
real shocks. Just needs to make sure he keeps leaving himself an angle. Oh. oh he's just okay, I think. A little bit closer to that yellow than what he would have liked, but... There's a little bit of signs of nerves creeping in, I think. It's not ideal. Now he's getting a bit closer to the line. Yeah, he's played it well. Just drop this in. Yeah, it's perfect. And that's it. Eight ball for the match. And there it goes. Yeah, George Hilly, to be fair, he played a very good match. Apart from frame five, he was pretty much uh, flawless in that match. And there is the, the stats from the match. There's four missed pots from, from George Tierney. Probably three of them came in that yeah, fifth the frame. Same frame, yeah. Um, but the story of the match from Chris Hampson's side is that he had opportunities earlier on in the match and wasn't able to manufacture a, a finish and get himself going. And George Tierney with uh, two reverse dishes and, and one break dish. Yeah, I beat all days whenever I want to. It's just whether I want it or not, that's all. You know? So are you confident you can go all the way? Oh, absolutely. None of these are in my league. How I'm 25 to 1, I don't know. The shot clock doesn't put you off? No, I love the shot clock. Love it. Brilliant. Yeah, happy days. Well, we all wish you the best of luck for the next one. So good luck, and we'll see you in the next round. Lovely. Thanks, Jade. See you later on.